might be frightening a new friend. What's the matter, David? Cat got your tongue? I hate you. David, come here. Sit down. David, in the foundling home where I was brought up, there was a little girl. Oh, she was about nine or ten years old. And she was very lonely. She had no friends, no one to play with. And you know why she was so unhappy? Because she thought no one liked her. But the funny thing is, every time a new girl would come and, and try and make friends with her, she'd chase her away. And pretty soon she was right. Nobody did like her. And then, you know what happened? I suppose a fairy godmother came along and made her into a beautiful princess, and everybody loved her. It wasn't that easy, David. But a man did come, and he talked to her for a long, long time, many times. And soon she learned a secret. Like what? She learned that the one who really didn't like her was herself. That's stupid. But it's true. You see, she thought that she was so mean and so rotten and such a bad person that she couldn't see how anybody could like her. So she, she chased them away and, and made enemies out of them because she thought that's how they'd act anyway. What's that got to do with me? Nothing. It's just a story. It's a stupid story. You know what that girl should have done? Should have gotten all those people, lined them up against the wall, and then pow, pow, pow. Why? Because you just told me how mean they were to her. But she didn't give them a chance. You can't solve problems by chasing them away or wishing they were dead. I don't know what you're talking about. You said that your father hates you. I don't believe it. What do you know about it? I know that you used to think I hated you. David, give people a chance. Don't push them away. He said he wants to push me away. David, your father's been very upset lately. He has a great deal on his mind. I'm sure he said a lot of things he didn't mean. People do that when they're upset. Even you. What did I say? You said you wished he was dead. You didn't mean that, did you? David, give him a chance. That's what we all want. I'll give him a chance. Does it hurt, Father? David, what are you doing up so late? I couldn't sleep. Worried about me, I suppose. Yes, I... I wanted you to know I'm sorry. Sorry for what? That I survived? Oh, all right, David. I'm... That was a bit cruel of me. Please accept my apology. Does it hurt? Oh, a little. The arm especially. What happened? Is it broken? No, it's just a sprain. It'll be better in a day or two. Well, all right, David. Is there anything else? Why do you want to talk to Miss Winters? Well, now, that's not your affair. It's about the accident, isn't it? You think she knows whose fault it is? Well, what makes you believe that I think it was anybody's fault? I know. I know you said someone fooled with the brakes, and that's why the automobile crashed. I know something else, too, young man. I know that I don't like little boys listening at keyholes. 
I wanted to find out what happened. Well, all right, so now you know. The car ran off the edge of the road. I sprained my arm and cut my forehead. Now you run along to bed. Do you know who did it? David, I have no patience for this. You're almost killed. Don't you think I have a right to know? The only thing you have any right to know is that it's past your bedtime. Now get up to bed right now. You don't even care if I am sorry. Just go to bed and leave me alone. That's all I care about. Well, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not sorry at all. Maybe I wish you'd... Well, that didn't take long. Well, not much to see except this. Hello, young fellow. What's your name? What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? David, what are you doing down here? It's all right. He's probably just impressed with the dignity of my badge. Hello? Oh, just a minute. This for you, Jonas. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Right, Harry. Did you reach him? Great. What did he say? But he's going to check. I see. Well, how long did he think it'd take? What else did he say? Well, that's all I can expect. Yes, we'll have something. We've got something here. A wrench with some prints on it. David, don't touch it. Now, will you just sit tight, Harry? All right. I'll be bringing it back to the office in a couple of minutes. All right, okay. Goodbye. Well, I guess there's nothing else for me to do around here. What are you going to do now? Go see Burke? I sure am. In the meantime, I'd like you to think about what I said. Think of anybody who might have a grudge against you, no matter how wild the idea may seem. David! Don't touch! I, I knocked it over by mistake. David, you stupid! It's all right, he didn't know. But he's got fingerprints all over it now. Here, David. Here you I'm sorry, it was an accident. You know what you did with that accident? I said I'm sorry. It's all right. Just add it to the couple of prints we've got. At least we'll know how his got here. Well, I better be going. Davey? You and I, we're very much alike. Did you know that? Are we? Yes, we both know what we want, then we go and get it. And we don't let anybody or anyone stand in our way. I don't know what you mean. I have a hunch that you do. Oh, Davy, come and look at this. Come on, come on, I, I want to show you something. Look at those clouds. Oh, boy. We're going to have a granddaddy of an electrical storm. Now, don't you think you ought to go home before it gets started? Okay. No objections anymore? No, not if you'll go with me. It's a deal. <laughs> now, you go on in and get washed up so your aunt... Elizabeth won't think I dragged her through a mud puddle. I can wash when I get home. Hey, hey, you go in there and wash. Do like I say, now beat it. Did he believe me? I don't know. Why did you lie? No, oh, that's an old habit of mine. When the enemy is moving in, you uh, try to keep them stirred up as much as possible. Your father giving you a bad time in there, wasn't he? Yes. 
I may have saved your neck. You know that, don't you? I mean, I had the valve right in my pocket. I wasn't even sure what I was going to do with it, and... Boom! Well, it's just lucky I didn't tell him the truth. What do you mean? Oh, come on, David. This is your friend, Burke. I helped you because I liked you. Well, I'm not so sure I did the right thing. Your father could have been killed. I didn't touch his brakes. Sure. And I found that valve lying on the road. Davy, we can tell those stories to them, but not to each other. What do you want from me? Not a thing. I never even had that valve. Then where do you suppose I got it from? I don't know. Davy, Davy, I saw you put it there. Come on, don't look at me like that, pal. Hey. You remember when you came up to my hotel room? And I, I went into the other room to get your drink. Well, I peeked. Yeah. I saw you take it out of your pocket and put it under the sofa pillow. Next time you try to pull a stunt like that, why don't you make sure that the door is closed? You should have thrown it away. Well, it might have been a little difficult for me to explain if someone else would have found it there. I wanted to go back, but you wouldn't let me. I wanted to go back and get it. Well, there was no point. I already had it in my pocket. That's the real reason you came up there, isn't it? Yes. But I couldn't know that we were going to... Oh, come on. You don't have to explain to me. You were in a jam, right? And you figured the, the best way to plant that thing was to put it into a room where a man was suspected, right? It just happens to be me. I'm sorry. Well, you couldn't have known then that, that we were going to be friends, could you? I don't know how you can like me. Well, let's say I, I know what it's like to be trapped. You do a lot of things that you're sorry for. Say a lot of things that you're sorry for. I kind of wish you hadn't picked on me. The way things are going around here, I say you showed pretty good sense. And you're not mad? A little. But if I was really sore, I would have told the truth in there. Then we're still friends. Well, as long as you stay away from my automobile brakes. But my father said he was going to send me away. That's no reason to do what you did. I know. It was Did anything special happen last night? Special in what way? I heard someone screaming, didn't you? I don't remember. You ought to. It was you screaming. I thought you were supposed to be sound asleep. Well, I wasn't. I was looking out the window. I saw you and Carolyn come running up from Widow's Hill. It looked like something was chasing you. Eat your breakfast, David. Was something chasing you, Miss Winters? Certainly not. Then why were you running? Because... Because it was damp outside and we wanted to get back into the house. That isn't why you screamed. Did you see a ghost? David, I've told you there are no such things as ghosts. Yes, there are. I've seen them. Where? Here at Collinwood. I like it best at night. Is that why you and Carolyn were screaming? David, I said we did not see a ghost. It's stupid to scream if you didn't see one. Go on, eat your breakfast. We're late already. I wish I could sleep the way you do. Why can't you sleep? Afraid you'll have nightmares? No, I guess I just have too much on my mind. Like whatever it was that made you scream last night? You only have one thing on your mind. You're so curious, David. Why don't you go up and look in your crystal ball that Burke Devlin gave you and see if you can find the answers? I did look in it. And what did you find? I told you you'd scream even louder. Oh, I don't think I would. Someone in Collinsport is going to try and kill you. David, why do you say things like that? Because that's what I see in my crystal ball. That's enough of that. Finish your breakfast. You know what, Miss Winters? What? When you're dead, I won't even come to your funeral. David, 
Why don't you like me? Because. Because what? Because you came here to try and take my mother's place. That's not true. Then why did you come here? Because I was offered a job. You mean me? I was offered a job to teach you your lessons. But if you won't concentrate on your homework and you keep on having these morbid thoughts about death and ghosts and widows, well, it'll all be a terrible waste. How can I help but have thoughts about widows when they're all around me? They're just in your imagination. I guess my mother had the same kind of imagination. She told me what it would be like here at Collinwood. Do you have a picture of her? No, I did have one, but somebody stole it. Who'd do a thing like that? I don't know, but somebody did steal it. Do you have any idea who it was? Probably my father. He wants me to forget all about it. Well, David, you must be wrong. I used to argue all the time. About you? Sometimes about me. You know, I think if it weren't for my mother, he would have sent me away. That's not true. And your father doesn't hate you, David. He probably just doesn't understand you. You know, lots of grown-ups don't understand children. Even when it's your own father? I wouldn't know. See, I never knew my father. I wish I didn't know mine. You should consider yourself very lucky to have one. You know, if it weren't for Aunt Elizabeth, I bet he would beat me. That's nonsense. You don't believe what I say. Nobody believes what I say. David, for the last time, there was no dead man down there. You were listening at the door, so you must have heard me tell Joe it was seaweed. Yes, but I also heard you talking about Mr. Malloy. David, he's old enough not to have to tell people of his comings and goings. Not anymore. I think my father killed him. David, that's a horrible thing to say. Is it horrible to tell the truth? But it isn't the truth. You don't know anything about it. I know what I saw in my crystal ball, don't I? It's in your mind. It's not true. It's, it's all in your imagination. I could see the waves. I could see Mr. Malloy standing up on something. I saw my father come behind him and push him and make him fall in the water. David, ever since I came here, you've been trying to get your father into trouble. And me too. Why? Why shouldn't I? You and my father have always been making trouble for me. But you still... David, do you realize what a serious thing it is you're saying? Your father... You're saying your father killed Bill Malloy. Do you know what kind of trouble he could get into? He could be sent to prison for life. That would suit me just fine. At this time of night, it's the best time to see them. I thought the walk would make him sleep better. You won't be too late. No. I always knew David was odd, but I didn't know you were, Vicky. I'll take care of her, don't worry. Are you sure this is the right way? I could get there with my eyes blindfolded. I didn't realize it was going to be so far. It isn't far. What's the matter? Are you afraid? Of course not. Then come on. the only person that's been in here in years. Is it ghost a person? No, or ghost. Oh, David, they don't exist. You mean they're not alive. They exist, all right. Wait and see. Maybe that shutter is one of your ghosts, David. No, it wasn't. 
You'll know it when you see it. It isn't nonsense. She told me she's condemned to stay here until a third girl died at the rocks at the bottom of Widow's Hill. I was hoping she'd come and see you. Why? Because maybe you're that third girl. Maybe you're the one that will fall and die. Well, somebody going in here, figured it might be Prowler, so I come over to take a look. And I told you to stay away from here. You have no right to tell me what to do. No, I haven't, but I'll speak to your aunt about it. Because if you'll take my advice, you'll keep away from this place. And healthy. My opinion is, best thing to do would be to tear it down. Don't you dare even suggest that, Matthew. This is my house. My very own. Anybody tries to do anything to it, I'll get Josette Collins to kill them! Mm -hmm. 